All right, so another good part. All right, uh... Yeah, let's begin. Trial part two, here it is, final, this is it. We might actually finish this game. I don't think so, though, we might... I mean, if I'm getting close, if we somehow get close in two hours, I might have to go through all. Let's see, let's see if I can catch this. Do this properly. Before we begin today, I have a brief announcement. As with the closed trial 10 years ago, some astonishing facts has come to light in the East proceedings. The revelation uh, that the well-known Reaper is actually an organization illegally executing its own brand of justice, and the discovery that a respective yard inspector was at its heart until he himself perished in an assassination plot. Well, I say to all members of the judiciary, here present on this occasion, that we will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Councils, you will undertake this trial with a resolve to pursue the truth to the bitter end. Resolve, yes. That's my attention. My lord, if I may inquire, the defendant may speak. On what grounds is Kazuma Sogi permitted to uh, continue his role as prosecutor? He has admitted to colluding with the victim in the plot to assassinate an innocent man. He shouldn't be enjoying the privilege of freedom, let alone be leading the prosecution. I submitted a written pet petition to Lord Strongheart, requesting that judgment of my transgressions be delayed by one day. Did what? In today's proceeding, I tend to expose everything. It's going to end it today. My whole life for the last 10 years. It's been all leading up to this one day. Kazuma. Whatever the outcome of this trial. I give my word that I will accept whatever punishment is deemed appropriate. However severe. I suggest you prepare yourself for the same, Reaper. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's get some water in. All right, we're heading somewhere. The defense finds this acceptable, I presume. All right, here we go. Yes. Yes, my lord, there we go. In that case, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this card to be in session again. Resume the closed hearing of Barak Van Zeet. Defense is ready, my lord. Prosecution is more than ready. Very well then, this preamble has taken long enough. Prosecutor Sogi, begin. Alright, the music's changed. Just my, as you wish, my lord. Prosecution calls the first witness to the stand. Bring Seishiro Jigoku into the courtroom. Last then, we've reached the final battle. He's putting literally everything on the line now in order to get to the truth. Come now, Nosuke. It's time for the Steely Resolve. Because this is going to test it to the limit. Alright, there he is, man of the hour. Witness, state your name and occupation for the card. Ah. So it was you who issued this, was it? The subpoena? I did what was necessary. Ha 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 ha. Well, look what the young man has become. I don't think I see the day when you take that tone with me, I must say. The witness will ensure his responses are pertinent to the question asked. My name is Seishiro Jigoku, a Supreme Court judge from the Empire of Japan. Sixteen years ago, this man came to London as a visiting student. Six years ago, or six years later, he returned to Japan. As well as a priest signing over the Supreme Court, he is also currently Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. And because fully aware of Mr. Jigoku and his preeminent roles, I invite him personally to the International Forensic Science Symposium as a representative of his country. I hear he also played a key role in the conclusion of the Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation. Ah, it was a great honor to be involved in such, uh, uh, in the negotiations. I put 
my all in that treaty. Just Jigoku, I must ask. Well, I never fancied the young murdering student turning up here in all places. You quitted me yourself. <laughs> and now, I'm practicing defense. Uh, I'm a practicing defense lawyer. Yes. I'm full of self importance like your friend across the car room. I see. You came here to London by invitation to the International Forensic Science Symposium. Then, without informing anyone of your plans, you took flight to France. Took flight? I have to object to uh, that turn of phrase. Then explain yourself. What exactly were the circumstances? Well, I was somewhat expecting this. I'm sorry to say. I will not give you to them. I decline to comment. Yeah. What? He refuses. Leaving the country prematurely when I was invited uh, invite a guest may be questionable etiquette. But my decision is unrelated to this case. Can't be bound to testify. Unrelated, you say? Unrelated? I appreciate that a respected police inspector has been killed, for which I offer my condolences. However, being an alien, I obviously never met the man, nor do I know the first thing about him. As such, I'm in no position to testify. It's as simple as that. About to sneeze. Hold on. Took a big sniffle. The murder of Don H. Wilson, you mean? That's right. And you, Judge Jigoku, are at the heart of both cases. The defense has evidence to prove it. Robinosuke, I see from the look of your eyes that you've resolved uh, to carry this through to the very end too. Let's see your evidence then. Uh, is it this? What do you say here? Uh, yeah. This is Telegram, detailing a communication sent between Britain and Japan approximately one year ago. The communication contained four names. K. Asogi, A. Shin, T. Gregson, and J. Wilson. You. You little. Where did you get that? In Tokyo. From your office, Judge Jigoku. What? What on earth did you... What's this all about? Why is my name on the list? This list of four names follows a certain pattern. T. Gregson and J. Wilson are the names of victims. K. Asogi and A. Shen are the names of assassins. No. <laughs> no. Yep. Here we go in Tokyo. Dr. H. Wilson life was taken in a western style restaurant in the capital. Culprit was found to be a visiting student who went by the name of uh, Jazil. Jazil? <laughs> Jazil Brad. But the real name was Asa Shin, a professional killer sent on a mission to kill from Great Britain. A Shin and her victim, Jay Wilson. The murder that just took place here in London was the counterpart of that crime. An assassin sent from Japan, also a visiting student, Kazuma Asogi. His victim was the British police inspector, Tobias Gregson. K. Asogi and T. Gregson. One assassin from each country to kill a large residing in in the other. What exactly is the defense suggesting? Yeah, well, what do you think, bro? <laughs> what do you think, strong man? Masterminds by a pair of individuals from each country as a form of an assassin exchange. And Telegram, the defense is required as proof of this international contract to kill. What? What? Watch you on the ropes now. Telegram was found in your office, Judge Jigoku. In other words, the mastermind in Japan it was you. That's crazy. Judge Jigoku, what's this all about? And you, Kazuma, you lied. During yesterday's proceedings, you acknowledged that you accepted the assassination mission. But the mark wasn't Judge Jigoku at all. It was T. Gregson. Detective Inspector of Scotland Yard. As shown by the name on the killing contract. Very impressive, Inosuke. 
But actually, I didn't lie. The name of the tiger I was ordered to kill never passed my lips yesterday. The idea that Seishiro Jigoku was the mark came entirely from you. Uh, <laughs> you. You deliberately avoid stating a name? Defense claims these four names indicate some sort of international assassin exchange. I'm sure I speak for all pres present when I say that the very idea seems utterly absurd. Well, Mr. Jigoku, what do you have to say for yourself? I was hoping he's going to lie. The silence only goes to prove his guilt. I don't think we can say that. In card. There's another very important point to this new development brings to light. It's now a distinct possibility that the scene of Inspector Gregson's actual murder was in the witness cabin aboard the SS Gruz. Judge Jigoku, you have to testify now. To reviews will put you in contempt of court. Alright, here we go. <laughs> There's no need to force quite such a vicious stare, young man. Very well then. A, sp a parting gift to you all. I'll tell you everything I know. A parting gift? <laughs> As you wish, me lord. Okay, here we go. Let's hope I don't fuck this one up. <laughs> Can we actually get a testimony, like, down pan? It's true that Kazuma Sugi was assigned to the assassination mission one year now. That's true. The target was Inspector T. Gregson. That was a condition of the British stator. However, in the end, something happened. That meant the young man was unable to carry out his mission. On the evening in question, a member of the crew was on duty outside my cabin at all times. There had been a shot fired. The crewman would have heard it. So I can't be involved? So you admit it then. As this communication suggests, this was a, uh, an ass assassination exchange agreement between Britain and Japan. A political endeavor at the highest levels. Not something I could discuss here. Do you use such a worthy practice as fully on study to coerce somebody to commit murder? It's the most appalling thing I ever heard. Appalling? Well, it's easy to judge. Pardon? So you had a reason for taking a sword to the British inspector, you know? What? Which is why he accepted the mission in the first place. Is that right, Council? Kazuma Sama. Just Jigoku. You are the mastermind behind this operation in Japan. And tell the court the identity of your counterpart in Britain. I'm not obliged to divulge that information. As I said yesterday, I think I've got an idea, but I won't spoil it. I've killed nobody. I freely admit that I accepted the mission, but on the night the plan was to be executed, I backed out. <laughs> in short, this disaster exchange was the defense has identified as unrelated to the events of the case. The crucial point is this. Your police inspector cannot have perished aboard that steamship in Dunkirk. Because if you've been shot in the cabin, it's inconceivable that a member of the crew wouldn't have heard. That's right. Gregson was killed after returning to London, in the room on Fresno Street. And the perpetrator of the crime was the Reaper, Barack Van Zeeks. The prosecution accu accusation remains unchanged. What am I like looking for here? Wait, do I have. What's his name? No, I don't have, uh, uh, the uh, Stroganov. That's what I was looking for. Uh, yeah, we have this drill, right? Maybe that'll be a part of it. Evacuation drill. Oh, yeah, this is it. <laughs> because they might have left, right? I think we got it. I think I've got it. I think we've got the idea. Uh, facade for such uh, Machiavellian dealings? <laughs> Clearly, it's a plot only a government minister and high-ranking judge such as the witness could hope to execute. Well, I seem to recall that it was someone on the British side who controlled everything. Be that as it may, 
This is not the place of this card to pursue this villainous assassination exchange plan. We are concerned only with the tangible events pertaining to the murder of Inspector Gregson. Is the fence clear on that point, Counselor? Yes, my lord. I'll keep that in mind as I cross-examine the witness. Alright. It's true that, uh, Kazuma Sogi was assigned- Yeah, 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 I don't give a shit. I think we got it, like, immediately. Uh... Is it this one? That's a contradictory statement. Yeah, there we go. Yes, as the caller's heard, there was a crewman posted outside Jushi Goku's cabin. However, we could be sure that, contrary to the witness claim, the guard wasn't there at all times. I'll take a drink. Gathered by Mr. Herlock Shlomes, yeah. You were acquainted yesterday, if you remember. Herlock Shlomes again. Calling this itinerary. Itinerary, I mean. To leave the pod of Dunkirk at exactly 10 p.m. and for a brief a period of 20 minutes, all crewmen of the S crew were to gather on deck for an evacuation. Sorry if that cut out. All crewmen were away from their post. And during that 20 minutes interval, of course, any gunshots emanating from your cabin would have been heard by no one. Got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Uh. Objection. Oh. 20 minute window of opportunity. That's an excellent find, Renosuke. But it amounts to nothing. Okay, why? <laughs> Because the witness clearly stated in his testimony that no incident occurred in his cabin. Unless you have some decisive evidence that could show his testimony to be false. Akazusha is nothing more than a conjecture. Very true. Well, counsel? I do. Inspector Grosser was killed in Judge Shigoku's cabin that night. I'm certain of it. Because the defense has evidence to prove it. Present the evidence for the defense at once, counsel. What proof do you have that the victim's life was taken? This, right? Take that! Judge Yoku, this was found in your cabin yesterday. What is that? Crown of a pocket watch? A, a pocket watch? If you will observe the victim's pocket watch, which we know he treasured, it's missing. Precisely that part. It, it can't be. Moreover, this crown is a perfect fit on the spindle protruding from the victim's watch. Now, the fact that this is, that was retrieved from Judge Goku's cabin tells us that the victim's watch almost certainly broke there. In other words, the victim was killed on the 31st during the 20 minute evacuation drill. In the cabin occupied by you, Judge Goku. Well, you're razor sharp, aren't you? Young murderer. Objection. Expertly maneuvered, Vinosuke. Your argument sounds entirely plausible. First, I rather like this pocket watch. It's full of cracks. What? And I believe, Mr. Goku feels the same way. That was a pretty line, pretty good line though. I was wrong to quit you earlier in the year. I was wrong, sorry. <laughs> Ever know that it would result in anyone having to listen to this drivel? I would have declared you guilty just to spare the world your ridiculous bombast. I think it's clear that the witness will have to give further testimony. When you hear what actually happened in my cabin that night, you'll not notice the pitfall into which you have stumbled. I saw Gregson, chilling. The fact that this part of the victim's watch was discovered in your cabin 
means that you acknowledge he was there, I presume. Yes, I do. Okay, well then. You may proceed to give your formal testimony. Oh, what happened in your cabin aboard the ship? On that 31st. Wait, let me... Yeah, I want to lean back on my chair here. Move the microphone closer. I had a guess. A guess. <laughs> waiting for me when I returned to my cabin after finishing my evening meal in the dining room. When I walked through the door, a mustachioed Englishman was there, foolishly waving a gun at me. I took care of him with an Ippon sail throw, though. He couldn't wait to run away after that. I imagine his watch was broken when I threw him over my shoulder. It was nothing to do with his murder. Bruh. A murder? What was it said? Murder. Yeah, with his murder. The inspector was clearly killed, having returned to Britain, because his body was found in London. Ooh, this one, I think this was a tough one. I don't think I've seen any. Gun, maybe? Upon sale. Or Sei... Seoi? It's a bit of jujitsu. I was careful not to use too much fog, but the man obviously landed too heavily for his watch to take. So, Vinosuke now a huddle. I imagine you can see the flaw in your logic now, can't you? One. <laughs> one. The fact that the pocket watch was broken in the witness cabin. In no way it proves that the murder, the victim's murder took place in there. Ah, how about the bullet hole? I've no doubt the inspector intended to kill me. He didn't manage to pull the trigger. He, but he did. Because he was merely the tactic. He did, right? Don't I have something? I don't have the... I've got this. This is the only weapon. I'm assuming that's the weapon, right? Well, the testimony appears to make perfect sense, as far as I can tell. Let me express my deep gratitude for your understanding, my lord. If this testimony holds, Judge Goku will be deemed to have no involvement in the case. Lord Counsel, I really see no reason for wasting precious court time here on a cross-examination. Sorry, my lord. The defense has a right to cross-examine. Now, I don't intend to squander that. You're an embarrassment to your countrymen. Not knowing when you were beaten. I bet you Mikito is like shaking his fucking head. Right now, it's like, I was thrown with this hoe? This fucking waste man. <laughs> this waste man. <laughs> Alright, I had a guest waiting for me when I returned to my camera. Okay, that doesn't need any. Alright. Obviously, you're talking about Inspector Gregson. Yes, though at the time, I did not know the man's name. There was no time for introductions. I valued my life over manners. By which you mean that the inspector was there to assassinate you, I suppose. That was certainly the impression given by the gun pointing in my direction. I had never seen the muzzle of a revolver shake around so much in all my life. Anyone would think that the man had never shot somebody before. I don't think Inspector Gregson would do that, though. Or maybe not, yeah, most of them haven't. So I dealt with the man myself. Hold it! That's a very brave move, wasn't it? It's far faster than the bullet, I can assure you. Surely all that commotion caused the crewman to come in, didn't it? Hmm, yes, of course. He burst in immediately without knocking. The inspector hurled... Hurl, hurled? Himself out the stocky fellow and just managed to slip past him to make his escape. Hold it! Or maybe it does. The crown snapped off and the glass covering the face of the watch was cracked. Preferable to the man's head being pulled off or his spine cracking, wouldn't you say? Not that the man was spared for long, a bullet to the chest soon saw to that. But the point is, the broken pocket watch doesn't prove that the murder took place. Maybe it does. Whatever you say, it doesn't quite ring true that no shot was fired in the cabin. Because there was an obvious bullet hole in the wall. Alright, we'll bring it up. What are you talking about? Huh? That's what the star of your lowbrow detective stories told you, isn't it? But I don't care for such fiction. 
Yeah, hey, have you worked it out yet? You little stripling. Stripling. No murder took place. No murder. Murder. Yeah, we don't have evidence for that. <laughs> you no, know, it would be nice that we took a picture of that damn bullet hole. Uh. Alright. Just take a moment to think that idea of yours too now, stripling. Was it stripling? Strip? Stripe? Stripling, I think. How on earth could you have gone back to Britain? I got carried? When people die, their bodies remain at that same spot. It's a devil of a thing. Drunk? Well, then. Obviously, the cohort must have moved the body. How exactly? Carrying a corpse off a ship in your arms would raise a few eyebrows at least, don't you think? Well, yes. That's true, but... Old passenger luggage is inspected when it's unloaded. Ah. Uh, now, I like to think the border police would query the parts of an English gentleman at ha as hand luggage. <laughs> Sorry about the train rustling along. I mean, there's no need. I don't know why I'm saying sorry for that. I killed the idea then. All right. Mrs. Addo. We heard that the first class passengers were under constant scrutiny by the crewmen posted to guard them. Which would mean that the culprit had no opportunity to dispose the body in the sea. Yes, that's true. So, transporting the body to Britain may have been the only viable alternative. Dear me, you really are new to this, aren't you? I've been doing this for a year, okay? I've been through like seven cases already. Alright, alter it. Yeah, this is it then. State your men testimony now. There's no possible way I could have transported the victim's corpse back to Britain. Uh it's did this again. When you said following departure from Port of Dunkirk. Okay. Wait a sec. Crew? Alright. I don't think it's that. I would, well, he can't be doing the trunk, right? But that's how the blood. All right, let's see what we could get here. There's an idea. Think about it, stripling. All passengers and crew disembarked at the same time and passed through the same checks at the border. The symposium guests were then driven out straight to this hotel in carriages organized by the ministry. And we met you as soon as you arrived at the hotel. So you did. Well then, remind me. Did I have a corpse over my shoulder at the time? Yeah, but how about your damn trunk, mate? Could possibly have brought the inspector's body back to Britain. Unless, of course, they developed some clever device these days to instantly move things from A to B. What did you say, then? Professor's hairbrain invention didn't actually work. Yes, of course. The fence has become unusually quiet, I noticed. Yes, because there's really nothing more to say. So, that's the story. Well, I suppose if you think about it. Maybe you drop a teacup in the office and it breaks. We don't say, Miss Naohodo must have been murdered there, do we? Is that a very old threat about what might have to be if I break another one? And the fact is that Inspector Gregson's body was found in the little room on French Low Street. If it really was killed in Judge Jigoku's cabin, the body would have been moved somehow, obviously. Transporting a dead body over a country border. That would be impossible for the majority of people. There must have been a special circumstance that made it possible for the culprit there. Oh. Do I have that? <laughs> I mean, a special circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, it must be like a document, right? The Sogi papers? No. It might be something in the paper. Don't really know. What did it say here? It says... 
Uh, flame wig. How about the gun, though? Can I not see how many bullets is loaded on this? It doesn't have anything on the gun. Alright, let me just do the first one, but I don't think it has anything. Because the so-called guy posted at your cabin door had just kill let your killer pass you in. He wouldn't have had his identification with him. He had his trench coat and mustache, not to mention a bag of chips. I imagine the crewman was convinced. The man accompanying him would have had two swords slung across his waist. You mean me? Who else? <laughs> Yes, that's true. You would have hoped the slide of a few saws might have set off alarm bells in the guards. Whatever. I left the cabin before its occupant returned, and I immediately disembarked the ship. Certainly, all I could tell you is that only the inspector was waiting for me when I arrived back in my cabin. That's right. None whatsoever. Yeah, didn't he add something? Don't we have anything? Like the symposium or something? Oh. Oh yeah, here we go. The trunk, right? There we go. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> Goldmoran. I think it's this. Objection. Yeah, there we go. Is there a possible way you could remove Inspector Gregson's body? I think somebody's trying to steal my AK-47. Uh, red line. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Apart from being impossible for you to do. The transporting of Inspector Gregson's body back to Britain is something only you could do. What are you talking about, Minosuke? I do have evidence. As well as being a judge, Mr. Jogoku is, only, is also Japan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Which means he's exempt for having his luggage searched when he enters the country. Yeah, I forgot that detail. We learned that when we first met you upon your arrival in London, he has that special privilege. I knew you were jealous. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho I presume you would call this Joshi Goku. It's a photograph we took in the fire of the hotel to mark the occasion. As the car would know, you, you have with you your large travel trunk. Large enough, in fact, to have a corpse inside. Mr. Naohodo, surely you're not suggesting. It's, yeah, I'm afraid I am. Yeah, Gregson was in there. Three days ago, we were chatting instantly with the new arrivals from Japan in the hotel. The body of Inspector Gregson was just meters away from us, inside Judge Jigoku's trunk. What a turn of events. Order, order, order in the car. I'm skeptical, Council. This grown man's body could fit inside even the large travel trunk. He could. Because I happen to know that the witness himself, of considerable size, fits inside his trunk. And verifying that would be extremely simple, wouldn't it, Judge Jigoku? But inside his trunk, how horrifying. After we spoke with you at the Great Waterloo Hotel, you had the opportunity to visit the apparent scene on Fresno Street. Taking your trunk with you in a cab to deposit the inspector's body. I don't have to listen to this nonsense. Dr. Gori, the coroner who examined the body, has confirmed the possibility. She's acknowledged that there are signs that steps may have been taken to disguise the true time of death. The onset of the body decomposition could have been delayed by storing it in the refrigerator. Council, as I remember, explained yesterday, refrigerators of the requisite size are far and few between. Yes, I'm sure they are. But one place they're certainly found is on large ocean liners. Such so ships are equipped with electricity, uh, electrically refrigerated cold rooms to keep food fresh on the long sea voyage. And the SS Goose is no exception. Professor Mikotoba told me about it only yesterday. Well, Judge Jigoku? 
However, much sure you prolong this debate, you can't eliminate the truth. All the evidence points to you being the killer. <laughs> well, this is all very heartening. You can see that it was a wise move, letting Asogi and you embark on this study tour. What are you talking about now? Logical reasoning, of course. All court proceedings will be built on logical reasoning in the new century. And I can see that you've both laid firm foundations for that already. Mr. Goku, please, stop diverting attention from the issue at hand. The defense has made an accusation against you. How do you respond? Respond? There's really no need for me to respond, is there? Why have I not? Because before you can even begin to answer the question of when the victim was killed, we must first establish one key fact. Where was the victim killed? It's quite logical. The actual scene of the crime. The prosecution's stance is unaltered. The killing took place on Fresno Street when the gunshot was heard. As the accused, Barack Van Zee shot the victim at point blank range. Since no tangible evidence exists to prove the prosecution claim at this time, the first deductions amounts to little more than an elaborate fairy tale. I'm afraid that's how the logical reasoning the British are known for really works, young stripling. Stripling? Stripling? I think it is stripling. The victim was shot in that room on Fresno Street and died instantly. I'm afraid the prosecution's claim that that's the only fairy tale here. How can you say that? Quite simply. Because that claim directly contradicts a certain piece of evidence in our possession. Uh, which one? I haven't got this. The prosecution claims that Inspector Gregson died instantly when he was shot at the scene on Fresno Street. This evidence contradicts the claim, as I save. Is it his trunk? Could very well be. Is it the watch? Or is it the candle alarm, bro? Let's go through. Oh, the autopsy report, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... Intermediate. Uh, in in it's not intermediate, indeterminate. Yeah, indeterminate. In indeterminate. Take that! It's not that. Never yeah, mind. I'll take I'll take the loss on that one. I don't think it's the watch. Was the victim killed in the room of Fresno Street or was he moved there after his death? There's only one piece of evidence that we have that shows the answer. Present the correct one this time then. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Well, you know, I thought it was that, but, uh... Is it the watch? Is it this? I'm so confused. What, what is it? it? Must be the watch, right? Nah, I don't think the watch is. This? No.
I just need to watch. Yeah, there we are. Is it the gun? I just think it's the gun. Take that! Yeah, it's not the gun. I'm so confused. What what evidence is there? We say, was the victim killed in the room on Fresno Street? No, he was moved there, right? There's only one piece of evidence that shows the answer. Blood? The hair? <laughs> Can album? Take that! No, it ain't the candle album. We'll get there, we'll get there, guys. Is it, is it the picture of Gregson? Take that! Yeah. Great. Now I'm on one HP. <laughs> should, I, should I just reload? Uh, yeah, fuck up. We reload. We reload. I don't. I don't get it though. Take that! I don't get this. Uh, yeah, this picture. I was thinking about the pool of blood, maybe. Oh no, the the posture of the body. All right. It's killed up, like in that trunk. All right. Okay. Tell the question. That body would have been killed up in a ball like that. Oh yeah, if you got shot point blank. Sorry to disappoint you, but your logic is flawed. You could easily have adopted the fetal position due to the pain of the shot, which subsequently proved fatal. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Fisher Goku. It's your logic that is flawed. What? Alright, yeah, here we go. Bring out the autopsy report. The victim died instantly. He would have felt no pain, much less. I've been able to draw himself into that position. Which begs the question of why the victim's body is curled up in that way. Could it be he be stuffed in a trunk? He was stuffed inside that little trunk on the SS uh, Grouse. Grouse. What was it called? <laughs> oh, yeah. Alright, we're getting something. You're quite right. The shape of the body. It looks exactly like being held. Held, kept, whatever. <laughs> whatever. This is Goku. Present your trunk for examination. I believe it's very possible that it will contain traces of the victim's blood. Ah! Present my trunk. I refuse. What? On what grounds? I'm the Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Empire of Japan. I shouldn't have to put up with this treatment just because of some stripling baseless accusations. In other words, Judge Goku, there is blood in your trunk. I decline to answer that. As the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I have privileges to allow me to. At this moment, you're not a government minister. You're a witness in a trial in Britain's highest court. I don't care who you are or what your status outside the courtroom might be, you will not withhold information. Nothing is more important than the truth. Yeah, hey, get him. Is he going to break the stand again? Order in the car. It's going to two hours. I don't think we're anywhere close. I'll be serious. You did it. <laughs> you did it. We have no shim at all, Kazuma Sobi. One. Very well. I admit it. I did bring the inspector's body into the country. But I did not kill him. <laughs> Inside my trunk exactly as postulated by the, by the defense, excuse me. You. Dear yeah, God, outrageous. So it was you. You admit to expect a... Uh... No, I admit to nothing more than what I've said. Then the man, I suddenly have no recollection. What on earth is that cryptic statement supposed to mean? I made dispose of the inspector's body, which was left in my cabin. In order to avoid unwanted attention, as the judicial do, do, whatever, assistant over there pointed out, I had no chance to throw it into the ocean. So, I decided my only option was to bring it to Britain with me and dispose of it somewhere else. You can't still deny it if you didn't do it. Then who on earth did kill the man? As you know, there was one other person in my cabin that night. I, he had the opportunity. And moreover, he had already accepted a mission. To take the inspector's life. 
He's, bl he's blaming it on Kazuma. That's right, who else it could have been? It was you, Kazuma Sogi. You. Now bring, bring, put the prosecution on stage. <laughs> I never thought you'd stoop to this, Seishiro Jugoku. Taking the words straight out of my mouth. Prosecutor. Kazuma Sogi. You saw by leaving the body in the cabin and you could print the crime on me, did you? Well, the prosecution council has already admitted to visiting the witness cabin on the night in question. Yes, and on an assassination mission, no less. You you wouldn't. I damn would. <laughs> so, what do you make of that, young stripling? You've heard my testimony now, and that's all I have to say on the matter. I'll admit to nothing more. I, I don't believe this. Counsel for the defense, what is your position now? Card awaits your response to the witness assertion. The assertion that on the night of question, the victim's assailant was in fact Mr. Kazuma Sogi. This is in the dead end, it seems to be. The answer is right in front of me. It comes down to Jugoku or Kazuma. Both of them had the opportunity to kill Gregson, but only one of them did it. It'd be both of them. And I'm just a step away from proving Hugh. Very well, the defense is ready to respond to the assassin. The assertion, I mean, put forward by Judge Jigoku. The idea that the victim could have been committed by prosecutor is... Uh, yeah, it's possible. I think it is possible. Well, it is possible, my lord. What? How could you... You think I want to believe it, but the fact is. I can't say without complete certainty what actually happens before because I wasn't there. You, you disappoint me, Vinosuke. If I may, Miss Naoto. I think perhaps the, that's why we form opinions based on evidence. Ah, so true. Naturally, we have evidence that can settle this argument conclusively. My lord, the defense would like to present evidence if support of. Before you plow on, being ignorant. Of what just occurred, Council. You must be penalized. Alright. Alright. I guess it is impossible then. Did you Goku? Let me remind you of something you said only a few minutes ago. Oh, it was possible. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think it was possible. I don't know. It was in the air, isn't it? <laughs> I think because, alright, I don't know. I don't know why I thought Sogi couldn't do it. Even though he claims that he hasn't. I don't know. I don't know why. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. I, that's what I know. Is it the... It must be the trunk, right? Never mind, I'm... Never mind, we're, getting, we're, we're losing everything here. I don't know how... Oh god, I don't know. A member of the crew was on sentry duty outside nearly all the time. Uh, so the the that now is down where the crime could it when the crime could have been committed. Uh, what this passport? This doesn't tell anything though. Uh, I don't know. Uh, his sword maybe. I, I don't think it's his sword. Take that. Yeah, there we go. I'm so confused. What the this this the the, the missile the the drill in there? All right, yeah, a lot. This is conclusive proof. All right, does not No, is it? I don't think so. 
No, it isn't. <laughs> isn't it? So it became much more significant. On the night in question, as always, the crewman sentry was on your guard outside your common door. As long as he was there, nobody could have fired a shot inside the cabin. Absolutely, because it's inconceivable that the guard wouldn't have heard it and come to investigate. But that tells us that the crime must have been taking place when the guard was elsewhere. Alright, and that now is it down to 20 minutes just after 10 o'clock. As indicated on the itinerary. Alright, so he died in France? Or whenever? The crucial point is when the evacuation drill took place. The steamship had already put to sea. Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. That, that was in the mind, but... Yeah, Kazuma was not on board at the time then. I didn't come to Great Britain to take anyone's life. But I left Gregson and disembarked the ship. I spent that night at a boarding house in town and returned to England the following morning. Oh yeah. That Kazuma Sui couldn't possibly have carried out the killing. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold it. He's gonna smash this witness stand. Absolutely not. I don't accept that at all. What do you mean? The boy's just saying that to uh Exonate? Exonate? Exonerate? Yeah, whatever. Himself. You can't trust that he really disembarked the vessel. Obviously, after he left my cabin, he hid himself somewhere nearby on the ship. Just waiting. Waiting for his chance to come back and finish the You know, we have evidence, right? Yeah, that's out of the question. Isn't it, Kazma? As the defense rally calls, I disembarked the vessel and spent the night in the boarding house in Dunkirk. As I said yesterday, I signed my name in the call. Alright, he was in the- Oh, I'm so confused when Kazma was in. He was in- He was with Gregson, but he disembarked before, but he was in Dunkirk. Yes. He gave a card and honest answer as a common man. Killed expected Tobias Gregson and transported his corpse back to Britain. Then you dumped the body in the room on Fresno Street and made it look like if the as if the murder happened there. That's what really happened, isn't it? Seishiro Jugoku. Well, are we actually done here? I don't know. It was that damn trial 10 years ago. That's when it all began. Oh, he's going to break the stand. Looking back now, my fate was decided that day. I was doomed already. Ah! Yeah, he broke the stand again. That's a lot of power. It's over. My life is over. Do we do it? A British assassin to eliminate a professor. May, may, I think we're... Are we at the end? Have we done it? Both assassins will use diplomatic immunity to evade conviction and return safely to their homelands. The assassin exchange request arrived from Britain about one year ago. Though it was hardly a request, it was a demand. And for that, he decided to recruit Mr. Sogi. The things didn't go according to plan. You cho your chosen assassin never made it to Britain. And you found yourself unable to dispatch a replacement. Because... I was already on my way to Britain at the time. And that's left me with only one option for carrying out my obligation. To eliminate the mark myself, personally. Of course, that was but a single opportunity for me to do that. The International Forensic Science Symposium, I presume. That's right. It'd be safest to carry out the plan before my arrival in Britain. He was given a sham mission by the Reaper. What? The Reaper? Alright, so the Reaper and... Mastermind of this entire operation. The Reaper himself. Ah. So, that means that the assassin exchange was... Was all planned by the Reaper? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I'm not at the liberty to say anything about my British camp of the band. Anyway... The inspector accepted the Reaper's mission and dutifully infiltrated my cabin on the steam jump. It was all a trap disguised to lead him to France and his own death. 
We're close. I don't know if we're at the end here. It was past nine o'clock when I returned to my cabin from the dining hall that evening. I didn't give him time to attack me. I choked him out. Oh, I choked him until he lost consciousness. There was a guard just outside the door. So I left it uh, at that for the time being. Even the slightest noise may have arose suspicion. So I bided my time waiting. For the 20 minutes after 10 o'clock. I had intended to finish him by strangulation, but moments before I had the chance, he suddenly came around and went for me in a reckless move. I received the British issue grown 16 years earlier, being a member of the judiciary as a visiting student. I never imagined I had to use it for something like that. Oh, so he shot him. The revolver belongs to you, does it? And the victim was killed inside your cabin on the SS Groose. Groose, yeah. It's not even Groose, isn't it Grouse? <laughs> I just realized I'm saying this wrong. You get access Grouse. And then arriving in Dover, you can seal the body in your trunk. Yep. In that case, you must have known. You must have had uh, intimate details of Inspector Gregson's attendance schedule. Yes, my British counterpart sent me everything I needed to know. The inspector was due at Fester Street at 5 o'clock that afternoon. In order to meet a man by the name of Hugh Bone, for whom he would take back his police identification. That's way too detailed. Who, who has his whereabouts like down pat? That must have been just after we took the photograph. Yeah, correct. I wasn't expecting a welcoming committee. I was more than a little nervous. Spar young guns slaying little firecrackers. Yep. Miss Venus, of course. I could see you of the candle trick there and then. So I donned a simple disguise and approached the girl to buy enough firecrackers to rep re replicate a gunshot. For some reason, the inspector had a bright red hairpiece for his traveling case. So I put that on, although I suspect I drew more attention to myself in that than I would have otherwise. Yeah, that's great. When he arrived at the room at around quarter to five. So I placed the body on the floor, moved the nose spot and set up my little candle trick. I arranged it so the firecracker would go off with a bang around 15 minutes later. Alright, so that Mr. Bone, who was due to arrive at 5, would walk straight into a trap. Except, at the last moment, I made a careless blunder. What was that? I imagine it was the bag of fish and chips. Ah. I didn't notice that I had fallen out of his overcocked pocket when I moved the body to the refrigerating room. Put it back into his pocket the following morning, but... Well, it seemed that the warmth of the heated cabin had accelerated the decay of the fish. Let me see that again. Warmth of the heated cabin had accelerated. Alright, anyways, that's... That's everything. All the sordid details of what I did. Well, that's it, right? Heard enough. We arrived at the truth about the murder of one of the country's most capable and respected police inspectors. The witness will be tried in the coming days. A crime was such of, of a vile nature you can expect the most severe penalty. Exchange of assassins. What a foolhardy idea. Mr. Jigoku, one last detail. Who was your candle part in Britain? Who was the mastermind behind the assassin exchange? No, we're not done yet. If you can say now, it can make matters any worse for you. Just tell us. Enough! Oh, enough. <laughs> enough. 
I've already told you that I cannot say. Why though? Even though I think that, you may very well never set foot in your homeland again. What are you waiting for? Can we get this over with now? It's finished. All of it. I'm finished. Then, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I now pronounce the findings of this court. This man before us had admitted to the willful murder of Tobias Gregson. Seishu Jigoku, it is the opinion of this court that you should be found. Pretty sure this is like the first time, right? And may I remind all those presented of the strictly confidential demand by this closed card. An objection. I'm waiting for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, moments ago, Mr. Jigoku signed a written confession, admitting to the murder of Inspector Gregson and the subsequent convoyance of the body. Conveyance? In short, the defense incident has therefore been established beyond doubt. Oh, wonderful. Well done, Mr. Nahahoda. Yes, um, thank you. Is something wrong? I'm just a little troubled. By his silence. True identity of the Reaper of the Belly and this extraordinary assassin exchange. You do remain in the dark about these mysteries, however. Insofar as the indicament brought against the defendant in this trial, we have reached a conclusion. I have every intention of pursuing both mysteries. As a prosecutor. As you wish. Now, for the formal adjudication. I hereby declare the defendant by Rock Van Zeeks. Objection! I'm guessing that's Kazma, right? The prosecution. Calls for adjudication to be deferred. Counsel. The accused innocence hasn't been fully established at all. And therefore, it would be wrong to deliver a verdict at this time. That is the prosecution's unwavering position. What? what? <laughs> but Mr. Jogoku has already confessed. Nevertheless, Barak Van Zietz has committed crimes for which he must be punished. Well... It would appear you have information that the court needs to hear, Prosecutor Sogi. Certainly. The murder of Inspector Gregson was actually carried out by Seishu Jigoku. It is clear from the witness testimony that he was coerced into complying with the plot. Into this sick, merciless assassin exchange. That may be true, but... So what I want to know is, who coerced Jigoku? Who was pulling the strings? The victim went to France and being ordered on the mission for the Reaper only to be murdered. In other words, the mastermind behind the assassination is and so on, in a position to give such an order. As we already established, the Reaper himself. Well, certainly, that would appear to follow. The prosecution hereby following his cues, the man in the dark, Barak Van Zeeks, of being the Reaper of the Bailey, and furthermore, I'm going to prove his guilt beyond all reasonable doubt. What? <laughs> Not over yet, alright. I think we could do another hour of this, maybe. Order, order. I think we're, we're at the cusp of the end here. The Reaper of the Bailey. There's a long-standing mystery, Council. Are you suggesting you have some new information which is to build a case? Yeah, he's already invested a lot of Van Zeeks very thoroughly in that regard. They found no evidence whatsoever to substantiate the claim that he is the Reaper. But perhaps. Uh, perhaps. But circumstances have now changed. What do you mean? It's already established that the Assassin's Exchange was negotiated with Jigoku by the Reaper himself. Which means, we now have a new line of questioning by which to identify definitely the man's identity. That is the prosecution's intention here. I must say I'm surprised by quite how tenaciously you appear to want to besmirch my name. <laughs> besmirch. You are guilty of an unforgivable crime, Lord Van Zeeks. And I will bring you to justice for it.
Whatever it takes. That explains Kazma's silence before. The stop had nothing to finish what the law of antiques unwittingly started 10 years ago. Unwittingly? Is it, was that right? Unwittingly, yeah. Wittingly. Very well, whilst it's extremely irregular, I will on this occasion grant the prosecution further opportunity for witness testimony. The defendant will disclose any and all involvement he has had with the Reaper and the assassination exchange. Alright, I thank you, my lord. For guiding the court so wisely. I hereby declare this card to be in session for a supplementary hearing. Put that logo. Pray turn a blind eye to this discourtesy as I verify that this vile and unremitting or un yeah, unremitting accusation has installed the contents of my hallow reed chalice. Of Anzeeks. I first had to stuff her the sitting room of the Reaper ten years ago now. And ever since that time I've endured the weight of implied guilt that's gone with it. So I woke up the chance to testify now and crush those allegations once and for all. Good. Then let's just uh, let justice decide, Lord Van Zeeks. The prosecution seeks to build, begin building its case by calling the accused to the stand as the primary witness in order that he may answer the uh, accu uh, bleh, accusation brought by the prosecution that he is the Reaper of the Bailey. Can be extremely dangerous. I came here today uh, determined to face him through wherever my arise as a lawyer and as his friend. That's what we must do. Defense has no objections, my lord. Very well. Defendant, you will take the witness stand. When well, ready is there, give te formal testimony on your subject of your involvement with the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. As you wish, my lord. Reaper and the assassin exchange. He never taken the life of another, nor have I instructed another to kill. I've been investigating the truth behind the Reaper for years, and I was aware of Gregson's involvement. That's the reason why I went to Fezzer Street that day, and how I came to discover the body. The point is, no common thread exists between myself, Gregson, and Dr. Wilson. Hmm. Oh yeah, there is. There is. There is. Uh, yeah, it, it's this autopsy report, right? Okay, therefore, there is no reason to suspect me of being behind the Assassin's Exchange. No, there is. I don't know if that's the right answer, though. I acknowledge that the public at large believe me to be the Reaper. However, that's a fallacy. Which I alone am in the position to forswear. Naturally, the prosecution believes the testimony just given by the accused to be untrue. But no skin now, Hado. Yes? Let me ask you, why are you here? What really brings you to this car room? Uh, I'll stop your BS, honestly, Kazma. The desire to go and cover the truth. Even if the truth proves your client to be guilty? With all my experience in this car room, I've come to realize something. The truth can be hidden. Sooner or later, it will come out. It was always my intention to work with my client in pursuit of the truth. Good answer. I want you to remember what you just said. Enough uh, dilatory chatter. As for the de defense, proceed to cross-examine the witness. Can you actually, like, is this the first time? I know exactly what you're thinking, Kazma. I know you're just waiting to point it out. Contradiction you can convince lies somewhere within this man's testimony. Yeah, I know where it is. Sadly. <laughs> I sadly know where it is. Oh, I only have two HP. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, Fanzix, there is a common thread. There is a common thread, Van Zeeks. I'm so sorry. 
But we'll push it on further. What's this? An autopsy report? Wait, this is 10 years old. From the autopsy of Lord Kling Van Ziegs. What? My brother's autopsy report? I'm pleasure to see. The offense doesn't attempt to run from the undeniable truth. Order in the card. What reason do you have for presenting a 10 year old autopsy report here, Council? This. The autopsy report of the professor's vinyl victim is an indelible uh, link. An ineligible link? Indelible? <laughs> and the defendant. Not the cursed name again. The professor. I personally researched all of the court records relating to that case. I know that at the time, autopsy was considered sacrilege to the victim's soul. For a member of the uh, 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 aristocracy, uh, Clint, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of juice, guys. <laughs> He was certain he would obtain conclusive proof of the, from the procedure. It was Dr. Wilson who conducted the autopsy. His signature is clearly visible on the document. As promised by Gregson, the autopsy did indeed produce evidence. Evidence that conclusively proved Genshin Osodi was guilty of the murders. In my brother's dying moments, he mustered all his remaining strength to leave the vital clue, that vital clue behind. What could it be, actually? Indeed, that was the key to indi indicating the professor for his crimes. They enabled Lord Van Zeeks here to avenge his brother's senseless death. What a marvelous victory in court. It looks like we're gonna. I don't, I don't think we're gonna go for four hours. Could the same be said? If it turned out that the key piece of the evidence in question was, in fact, fabricated? Damn. If the inspector, the coroner, and the prosecutor all colluded together. To cast an instant Japanese man as a mass murderer. That's outrageous. And now, 10 years later, for some reason the secret has been threatened and he's protected. So this is Asogi's assertion. Order at once. be sentenced to death. It was all a sham, and I swore to myself that I'd proven. It's just why I had to come to Britain. Whatever the cost. You have to forgive me if I feel compelled to toast this vengeful Nipponese tenacity of purpose here. However, he who fails to quash his emotions in the car room has failed as a liar. Come on, Kazuma. You know this won't wash. Claiming your father was misrepresented in a trial that took place a whole decade ago. You must see that without evidence, there's nothing more than a wild accusation. As it happens, I have evidence. What? As the courtroom has heard, I've crossed this channel to France with Gregson on the 31st. I went with him on the pretext of being the assassin recruit to kill Seishiro. But my true intentions were to make the inspector tell me the truth. What truth? The truth about the evidence. And he acknowledged what I already deduced. There's a closely guarded secret about what went on in the autopsy 10 years ago. What? A secret? I know nothing of a secret. While we waited for my supposed mark in Jujoku's cabin, I drew my client's illustrated sword, Rumor, before the inspector's eyes. He very quickly understood what my true motive was. Oh shit, we're gonna get a... Right. I see. You're that Sogi's young lad, are you? And what? You're gonna cut me down with that thing? Is that it? That would very much depend on the answers you give to my questions. I learned one more thing, Claire. I still believe your, uh, your father was the professor. There's no doubt in my mind. Unfortunately, back then, we didn't have the evidence we needed to make the crime stick. So, you admitted that. The evidence used in my father's trial was fabricated? It was for the good of the country. Anyway, I was just following orders. 
Orders. What exactly did you do? Speak. I'm not saying another word. Even if your life depends on it. That's right. Even then. That's when the tip of the sword broke. Oh, Kazuma Sama. The result of Clint Van Zee's autopsy were fabricated. Then the investigative officer Gregson and the lead coroner Wilson must have known about it. And they could only be ordered to pervert the course of ju pervert <laughs> the course of justice in the way by one man. The man leading the case for prosecution, Barack Van Zee, using the other definition of pervert. In other words, the defendant did have cause uh, to organize this exchange of recessions. Exactly. And uh, as was established earlier, I don't think we're going to finish this, that's right. <laughs> In another hour. I think we'll stop if, if when the call ends. Maybe, if we get to that point. Well, accusations there. As Miss Oki. What? What you just told to the card? You're absolutely certain of your facts? You Gregson really fabricated evidence for the trial ten years ago. I hear it with my own ears. Shameful admission. Now, this is a first. In that case, I know. The name of the Reaper. What? Lord Van Zeeks. He gave no such orders. I know that for certain. Which now is down the remaining possibilities. The one. If Lord Van Zeeks isn't the one behind all this. Then yes. There's only one other person who could have done something like that. I believe I know who it is too. You. I just had a feeling this day was going to come up. I think I know who it is true identity of the infamous reaper of the bailey is uh is it is it strong hand <laughs> i think it is i hope so Take that. the only person who could have arranged the assassin exchange and manipulated the autopsy results all right yeah we know someone who did that shit is the lord chief justice himself lord male strong hand <laughs> lord lord strong hand Oh my god. Yes, it's true that 10 years ago, the defendant handled the prosecution of the professor in court. But he only took over the case after his brother, Lord Clint Van Zeeks, has been killed. All oh, right. Oh yeah, he was the prosecutor. I get you, I get you. I could only assume that this is the most inappropriate joke in British judicial history. Well, Lord Van Zeeks. 10 years ago, I was very new to my profession. I had a burning desire to avenge my brother's death. So I pleaded for control of the case. The investigation to that point. Supplication of the lords to allow my brother's corpse to be examined. All the evidence I was given, the autopsy reports, it all came from you. I spent my life since then believing I was in your depth. The way you stood aside and let me handle the trial. I see now. I was very much mistaken. I was a hugely influential force that caused the inspector and the coroner to break the law 10 years ago. It was. I don't know why I said I. And the same force was still felt a decade later on the other side of the world by Seishiro Jigoku. Our strong guard, everything falls into place when we recognize that you are the Reaper of the Belly. Get the foot up. Call away your response, Mr. My Lord. <laughs> this may well, very well go down in British judicial history. I assure you, it is no joke. Consider this a formal accusal by the defense. It is a warning no response. A formal accusal. Don't be absurd. The defense claims are utter nonsense, a wild fantasy at best. You're not going to defend yourself? He claimed there was some wrongdoing with Lord Clint Van Zeke's autopsy. 
as utterly untrue. Attention. I heard it from Gregson's own lips. He admitted it to it. And where's your evidence? What? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Pull up Gregson's dead now. Unless you were thinking of summoning a ghost to the stand. You. You mean to say, I'm gonna run away. <laughs> I forgot how the system card, uh, the system works in your little backwater country, damn. In the cards of the British Empire, without evidence, there's no case. I have no intention of entertaining some wild fantasy that cannot uh, possibly be substantiated by anyone or anything. Ah. Yeah, we're not going to finish this. We're not, we're, okay, we're not even near the end. I think we are near the end. Just like getting this guy. God, maybe a few more testimonies here and there. That's the real purpose of the assassin exchange. All right, so he's killing people that was in the card. All right, I see, I see. Even Wilson, yeah, that makes sense. Kazuma, he's more or less waited his whole life for this moment. Is there really nothing else we can do now? There's no other avenue we could go down in pursuit of the truth. What well, happened all these years ago? If there was someone who could testify about Clint Van Zeke's autopsy. Yeah, isn't that uh, Sheath? Maybe <laughs> I don't think it's Sheath. It might be Gory, uh... oh, right? I think there is, right? It's gone through extraordinary less to cover his tracks. Even so far as dispatching an assassin all the way to Japan to assert Dr. Wilson's silence. And Dr. Sheaf won't say anything against Strongheart. But there's still one way of hope. I'm guessing it's Gauri, right? Because she, she's listened to all of Sheaf's story. Actually, there is one person. One person who can still testify about that autopsy. Don't be ridiculous. There's no one left. Who, Venosuke, who? Tell me. Alright, okay. I think we're going to stop after we bring this person on the on the stand, I think. Uh, it's, it's getting a... I, I think we're, uh, we're near the end, but we're not at the end. <laughs> Doing it for the truth. It's Gory, right? M Maria, right? I hope it's Maria. Uh, Maria? Could be Iris. I'm gonna call Maria. Take that. Okay, denied. All right, fucked it up, guys. This is Shlomes. All right, thanks. Don't spare me my feelings or anything. Oh, we're on one health now. <laughs> Oh god. Zenith uh, present. I don't, oh, Mikotoba? Oh, right, yeah, 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 I do. It's, it's Mikotoba. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Mikotoba. <laughs> yep. Well, it wasn't Maria. Alright, we're bringing. It's Mikotoba. Yeah. Take that. There we go. Heaven help us. Another Japanese. An expert in forensic medicine, my lord, Professor Yuji Mikotoba, 16 years ago. He came to London with Sheishiro Jigoku and Genshin Asogi as a visiting student. And what could his testimony possibly tell us? Professor Mikotoba was the primary assistant during the autopsy in question. He was also the person who actually penned the report. Incorrect. The autopsy was carried out by the coroner, Dr. Wilson. The report carries his signature. Yeah, it was his primary assistant's duty to keep a written record of the coroner's work during the procedure. In actual fact, the coroner merely read over the report at the end and signed it. In other words, Professor Mikotoba witnessed the entire autopsy from start to finish. Oh, I'm, I'm only playing this with one <laughs> HP. I think we'll stop here. I think, yeah, we're not, we're nowhere near, man. We're nowhere near. Because we need to bring Strongheart in. What is denied anyways? <laughs> Professor Mikotoba's in London at this very moment. We can summon him in the, in the stand. He's right here. No, of course he's not going to agree to it. Stronghand has no attention to summoning anyone who, know who knows. He's too concerned about protecting himself. Prosecutor, Exogi, let me refresh your memory, as you seem to have forgotten the prosecution's stance. Only minutes ago, you accused the defender of being the Reaper. 
10 of the masterminding of the, yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. <laughs> Those claims. And make your case complete. And this time, I don't have the requisite of evidence. So that's exactly why we need witness testimony. The professor's case is close. There are no clues in the distant past that will bolster your argument today. I'm afraid to say, Prosecutor Sogi, that you would appear to be possessed by the spirit of your late homicidal father. Jesus. Now, as I said earlier, this card has already reached a conclusion. Inspector Gregson was murdered by a Japanese Supreme Court Judge Seishiro Jigoku. As for any hidden circumstances that may exist, they will be investigated in due course by proper authorities. We all know what will happen. I will give the mastermind of the whole venture time to cover his tracks again. For which you mean me? Yeah. Yeah, dipshit. <laughs> Punishment for this contemptible behavior will be decided at a later date. As for you, Prosecco, <laughs> Prosecutor. This futile game of revenge is over. Your master, Asogi. Oh, damn. He's, <laughs> damn, look at this. Darren. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> Jeez. Some of the people in the gallery, they're like, what the fuck's going on here? That will be all. I hereby declare this trial to be over. Card is Holden. Who's that? I don't know who's that. Is that Mikotoba? Oh no, Shlomes. When when the da when the <laughs> when the Oh god. I don't even have the line. I don't even have the line. All of despair. You know, everything falls down to despair. The man of hope comes in. Shlomes. It's imperative that you refrain from bringing this trial to an end at this stage. Is it really? And why would that be? You need only recall your own words from the opening of trial to answer that question, if I may. We will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Surely it can't be. Oh, right, damn. That the shock of being accused of being the Reaper yourself has erased that from your memory, can it? Damn, Shlomes. Get in there. The whole truth, sir, has already been uncovered. It would seem that we have a great many important members of judiciary presented here today. I put it to you, my dear fellows. Should the trial end at the, this juncture? After all... Why have you been invited to attend? To nod along to the prevacerations or pre prevarications of your superior? Yeah, get in there, Shalom's. Order. Order. When all hope is lost. Yeah, that's that's the saying. When all hope is lost, Shalom's comes in. Same the day. You and you alone, my dear fellas. Have the power to push this door open now. The auditors and the girl have no right to express an opinion on the court proceedings. Silence! That's right. The judge has absolutely the authority here. Yes, if he calls the trial to an end, it must end. But will that really do? I sense dark things occurring behind the scenes. Dark things indeed. Is there a single person here present? Who can honestly say something? What's going on? What you said? Uh, who can honestly say he doesn't make... He doesn't sense the same. All right. The trial should go on. Summon the witness. That's right. We need to clear this up before that young Japanese fella is remanded in this country. I can't believe my lord. You were sure those present uh, that you would uncover the whole truth. Indicate yourself with this outlandish accusation. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's the very foundation of British law. All right, I think we may have to go into a break after this. A toast to the dependable colleagues in the gallery. Toast to five. Yeah, let's go. Well, my lord, you hear the British voice of the, the voice of British justice. I take it. I think you'll find it'll be rather awkward to silence. Car will 
Recess briefly. All right, we'll stop here then. We'll stop here. I have no intention of shrinking from these allegations. Bailiff, arrange for the subpoena of the witness at once. As soon as the gentleman arrives at the courthouse, we shall reconvene. A recess won't be necessary, my lord. Oh, we're going right in? Oh, shit. Okay, we'll just stop after this then. Victor Tobe is a close friend of mine. He accompanied me today and is waiting in the antechamber as we speak. I do believe he's been enjoying a little trip down memory lane, in fact. What? Professor Victor Tobe is here in the courthouse. Mr. Sholmes, you... You didn't know this would happen, did you? My dear fellow, no one is in a better position to answer that question than you, surely. I've been playing chess the whole time while you've been playing checkers. Well, I must thank for your assistance in this matter, Mr. Sholmes. However, you are no further of use here. Kind of leave the courtroom at once. Of course, in truth, I find myself rather busy now as of a result of these developments. Mr. Nahodo? Yes. I trust you, you have Iris's little lucky charm with you. Absolutely. It's still in my pocket. She says her regards and a reminder. If you find yourself at the dead end, the ears are at your disposal. Just one tug, if you please. One tug. Oh, um, of course. In that case, the trial will continue without delay. Bailiff, show the witness to the stand. Alright, can we stop? Like, <laughs> we're not even close. There's long straw in hand. He's the Reaper of the Bailey. I think we're, we're at the point here. Where's this trial exactly going to take me? I wonder. Just how deep am I? I'm about to plunge into the blackness of the abyss. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to head into the heart of this maelstrom. Hey. And confront whatever horrors this tries to drown me under. Or to be continue, please. Hey. All right, we're going to stop. We're not, we're nowhere near. I mean, we're at the end. This this is probably the end. But I think it's a good time to stop now. It is a great time to stop now. Uh, You know what? Sure, why not? And we'll call it here, I think. Oh. I've got Gauri's here. We'll stop here. We'll stop here. As soon as the first word is uttered. Stay your name. An occupation for the car. Alright, uh, yeah, we're just gonna... Let's not save it, it's fine. Alright, and that was it for the Great Ace Attorney. Uh, been through a lot. I think next session is probably the end. But I think we're at the end. Uh, we're nearly at the end. Yeah, next session is at the end. At the cusp. Uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but... I think I could finish it in two hours. Hopefully. But, yep. Uh, most likely we're gonna get strong hard in the... Stands. I don't know who's gonna judge. Uh, maybe he's still judging. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. But that's it for me. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this session of the Great Ace. There, uh, this session of the Great Ace Attorney, and I'll see you guys next time. And I'll catch you guys later.